Hi people, it's me, Anya, my pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for part two of my favorite urban fantasies. For those who don't know what urban fantasy is, it's a subgenre of fantasy where the story is set in modern day, but the story has some fantastical elements to it that don't exist in modern day, if that makes any sense. So basically, in case you want some more recommendations, I will leave in the description box below part one that I did a while ago. So anyway, with that said, the first book on this list is called Wings of Ebony. This book is a YA urban fantasy that follows a young black teenager from Houston whose world is upended when she learned of her godly ancestry. This book was so good and it's absolutely so well done and this duology is so rich and it's so engaging and I read it about a month ago if I'm not mistaken and it's absolutely so good. So anyway, first of all, the world building was so immersive and it was so intriguing and it was absolutely so inventive and it was so good and I really enjoyed the parallels to real life. Second of all, the plot was so intriguing and so engaging and so thrilling. Third of all, the characters were so well developed and so distinct. The romance was so well developed and absolutely so lovely. The sister relationship was so good and so well developed. Like I mentioned, this book is so good and this duology is so underrated and deserves so much more hype. So with that, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Unseen Magic. This book is a middle grade urban fantasy that follows a young girl who will do whatever it takes to save her home when she accidentally unleashes a shadow self that's wreaking havoc wherever she goes. I don't know if that makes any sense, but basically this book was so good. It was absolutely so well done. The world building was so inventive and it was so immersive. The plot was so intriguing and it was absolutely so engaging and so readable. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. This book is absolutely so wonderful and it's so lovely and I really, really enjoyed it. I had like somewhat low expectations for this book because the last book that I read by this author was The Bone Houses, which was this YA, if I'm not mistaken, urban paranormal fantasy or something like that, which I rated three stars, so I wasn't really expecting to rate this book any higher than three stars, but then I did because it was so good. It was so engaging and it was so readable and it's absolutely so underrated. So with that, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Ghost Squad. This book is a middle grade urban fantasy that follows a young girl who must reverse a curse to save her town when she accidentally awakens malicious spirits. This book is so good and I believe it's also inspired by Dominican culture. Anyway, as I was saying, this book is so good and it's absolutely so well done. First of all, the world building was so amazing and it was so inventive and it was so intriguing and so engaging. I personally prefer this book to the author's most recent book, Witchlings, which came out about a month ago if I'm not mistaken. And I absolutely think that Ghost Squad is worth all its hype and so much more because it was so good. The characters were so well developed and so distinct and their friendship was so lovely and it was so wholesome. The plot was so intriguing and it was so engaging and the story was absolutely so readable. I typically don't love like paranormal urban fantasies since I don't like believe in ghosts or anything like that, but this book made me want to, more so. You know what I mean? Because the paranormal like elements were so well developed and so vivid and the story is so well done and like I mentioned, it's worth all of its hype and so much more. So with that, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Fire with Fire. This book is a YA urban fantasy that follows a pair of sisters where one of them, Dragon Slaying, takes a back seat in her life and the other one, Dragon Slaying, takes more of a forefront in her life and now they're on opposite ends of an impending wall. This book was so good and it's absolutely so amazing and I think, if I'm not mistaken, that it's a fantasy standalone as well but I would have loved to read a sequel because this book was so good and it's so underrated and for what? First of all, the sister relationship was so authentic and it was so well developed. The two characters themselves were so well developed and so distinct. The plot was so intriguing and it was so engaging. The world building and the dragons were so well developed and so immersive and so inventive. This book deserves so much more hype because it's so well done. 
also one of the sisters is bisexual and the bisexuality representation was so lovely and it was so wonderful and it was also like so casual as well you know what i mean anyway this book is so good and it deserves so much more hype and it definitely exceeded my lower expectations which i love so anyway with all of that said i would definitely highly highly recommend this book the next book on this list is called only a monster this book is a ya urban asian fantasy that follows a young girl who discovers that she's half monster and must embrace that in order to save everybody that she loves this book was so good and honestly i can't stop thinking about it because it was so captivating and it was so engaging it was absolutely so well done in every single element first of all the plot was so intriguing and it was absolutely so engaging second of all the world building was so immersive and it was absolutely so inventive typically when i read stories that incorporate time travel the time traveling is like so convoluted and it doesn't really make any sense but in this book it made so much sense and it really made the story like so much more vivid and more engaging for me if that makes any sense the characters are so well developed and so distinct the romance i'm so excited to see what direction that will take in the sequel because i'm so excited for the sequel and i personally ship joan and alan and not joan and nick but whatever this book is so good but i have no idea what direction the romance will take i just hope that it will be in the direction that i prefer you know what i mean but anyway i trust that whatever way the author takes she will make it well developed because this book was so good in every single element and like i mentioned i'm so excited to read the sequel i think the sequel comes out next year since this book came out this year but anyway at any rate this book is so good and i can't stop thinking about it so with that i would highly highly recommend it the last book on the list and solely not the least is called blood like magic this book is a ya urban fantasy that follows a young girl who must sacrifice her first love to save her family's magic only she's never fallen in love before so she's in a bit of a pickle this book was so good and it's one of my new five star favorites of 2022 which means that i loved every single thing about it and it made me cry at least once if not twice this book was so good and it was so well developed in every single element first of all the world building was so inventive and it was absolutely so immersive and it also incorporated some science fiction elements so so well because if i'm not mistaken this book is technically set in the future but like not like fall in the future maybe like only a decade in the future or something like that anyway the plot was so intriguing and it was absolutely so engaging and it was so well developed and so like vivid and so captivating the characters were so well developed and so distinct the romance was so lovely and it was so wonderful and the family dynamics was so great and it was so like well incorporated into the story so so well if that makes any sense this book was so good and also the queer representation was so casual like the main character's love interest as well as one of her cousins were both transgender and they were like both like such casual well developed distinct characters so like the representation and their identities was like so casual but it was like so like well developed you know what i mean i don't know if that makes any sense at all but basically this book was so good and it was so well done and i'm so excited to read the sequel in august so with that i would highly highly recommend it so in conclusion i've started to gravitate more and more towards urban fantasy the more and more i enjoy it so anyway like i mentioned at the beginning of this video i will put in the description box below part one to this video in case you want some more recommendations if you enjoy this video please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up comment down below the sunflower emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video thanks for watching subscribe to my channel if you're new and i'll see you in my next video bye